All right, this morning we're going to learn about how to partition a table in SQL Server. Now, the first thing about partitioning is that you're going to want to set up the file groups first um, and the actual data files. So the way that you can set up file groups, there's actually a couple of ways, but the way that I prefer to do things is uh, through um, scripting. So in this example, I would alter the database and I would add file group st1 and I would add another one in this example. I'll go ahead and make it consistent. I would alter database and I would add st2 and then I would add st3 and st4. So I would create four file groups, okay? After I've created four file groups, I would then go and I would actually alter the database and I would add a file which is going to be a dot in the F file and so it would be very similar to a data file so let's go into the properties and just show you this really fast so we have a data file right now in this database by the way I'm not going to actually run through this or execute this because I don't want to partition anything but I do want to show you how to do it so we have a .mdf file and you'll see this .mdf file that's amazing this is one of the few that's actually under there um, this .mdf file you'll see it has an initial size it has um, auto growth set on and it has a name and it has a location of where it's stored and so and we know that it's stored on what file group primary right because the file groups there's only one right now but if I created other file groups I could then store other database files on those other file groups which I'm not going to do but you can do that so for instance when you alter the database and you add a file then you can add that file to a file group so if I created another file I could add a file group to st underscore one okay so that's kind of the way that uh, things work actually in this case I could actually just do this primary and that would make more sense because there would always be a primary well of course it's keyword so all right <clears throat> Now, after we create the appropriate file groups and we create the appropriate data files, and that's that's the first and most important step, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to create a partition function. And in this case, a partition function is named stock symbol function var car 10 as range left for values blam. Now, um, you'll see G, N, and S. So in this example, I'm doing this by symbol, right? There are people that will do it range right and range left. I prefer to do range left, but I'll explain what range left is. I'm not going to go into range right, though you can look at it. Understand you can do right or left. So you do have that option. So range left means it goes up to G in the first group. So there's going to be four groups, right? The first group is going to be up to G. The second group is going to be above G all the way up to N. And then the third group is going to be above N up to s and then the final group is going to be above s okay now after you create the partition function you will then create the scheme I'm not sure why scheme isn't in blue in this case but it isn't and so you'll name the scheme and you'll say as partition we're going to partition this would be the table and then of course we're going to say two and you'll notice here are the file groups okay so now and, and this is kind of the deal like and, and then of course you'll um, hold on one second then you'll, of course you'll you'll move it according to the table so basically you will either store the table or the index on that partition uh, scheme so one of the things is and you don't have to necessarily I should say you don't have to necessarily create a table you can also alter the table or the index if you want to to point to the partition scheme where you're going to store the data. So why do people do partitioning? Because one of the things that I, I do want to discuss is that there's only two examples in my career which partitioning was, and I don't want to say it was really good, but it was okay to do. And I like the, the reason why I would never do the stock symbols like a partition, even though I know companies who do this. I've actually worked for companies that do it this way, and I, I always think it's funny. So I spent a year testing because I use a bunch of you know high frequency trading stock analysis just a lot of algorithms that go in and do work and so it's very important for me to have the best performing 
algorithms. It's, it's very important how I approach storing data. Now, some people use big data, nothing wrong with that. MongoDB, uh, Hadoop, you name it. There's nothing wrong with that. SQL Server is very effective. But you will often hear, especially at SQL Server events, you either approach data storage in kind of a relational way, or you do partitioning and you do a relational way with partitioning. I mean, those are kind of the two options presented. And one of the things that I found when I was studying MapReduce, I had an idea because what MapReduce really does well is it breaks down data and organizes it, structures it in a way. And so, you know, thinking about, okay, so I have, you know, this huge table of stock data and, you know, I may have three or 400 columns and each of those columns are like another level of analysis. You might have the 200 simple moving average. You might have the 100 simple moving average. You might have all these Greeks added to it. I mean, it's just, these are just huge tables, not in terms of how much data they have, but in terms of all the columns and you add that. And so instead of actually approaching it from a partitioning perspective or a here, let's keep everything in one table and just throw more space or here, let's throw more memory. What I did was I decided to just go ahead and break everything down into individual tables. So I'll give you an example. Using the S&P 500, break all 500 symbols into their own tables. And it routed what anybody thinks partitioning's advantage is over one table. It beat both partitioning and the one table approach. I mean, just killed it as far as analysis is concerned. And I mean, I have algorithms that one of the algorithms that I use, which is a business day based algorithm, is very complicated. And um, yeah, I mean, I always know when I run it because CPU usage is going to go through the roof, memory is going to go high. But when I broke it down into individual tables, not a big deal. Um, with C Sharp and T SQL, I mean, it's very fast uh, and it just doesn't take a lot of resources. So this is where I agree with a lot of like big data developers. They criticize the .NET and SQL Server community for not really being that creative. Like you guys tend to approach things as two ways. Like I'm either going to keep it in one table or I'm going to partition the table. And this is a valid criticism. Like you don't have to do either. And you don't even have to store your data in a relational form if you don't want to. And my stock data is not relationally mapped. I don't, I'm not going to hit there with tons of joins. That's ridiculous. That's absurd. That's going to take more resources. And I want these algorithms to be lightning speed. I do not want them to look at other tables. And no, you don't have to jump to Mongo or jump to Hadoop or all these other tools. You can do it that way, but people are making a choice not to. So I, the reason why I want to point that out is don't think that you only have one or two ways to do it. That's usually how it's presented because those are the tools that Microsoft gives you technically. But actually, you can break everything down into individual tables. And like I said, that that's, to me has been much faster when I've tested it. But I have worked in a couple of environments whoa, where um, they did partitioning. And yeah, I tested it up with my approach. And it wasn't even, it was about five times faster with my approach. As far as the one table approach, a lot of it's relative to. And you will find that there are times when, yeah, it's just better to have one table. But in those few instances which partitioning does work, this is how you would partition. You want to make sure that you have the files and the file group set up. You then will create your partition function and you want to adjust it so which rows of the table are going to fall into those categories, whether it's going to be range right or range left. Then you're going to do your partition scheme. And then, of course, you will either um, create or alter the, the table or index. Remember, you can store an index too. You can partition an index and you'll uh, map it appropriately. Uh, to that storage location. There is one other thing, and this is the other benefit to doing individual tables. Remember that when you partition a table, developers like this solution. DBAs don't. Um, not all DBAs, but most DBAs do not like this solution. So it, it is going to add some big administrative overhead. And that's where, you know, having a cost benefit analysis about whether it's the most effective solution is a good idea. The individual tables I did compare. Um, from an administrative perspective, it adds about, on average, 7.3% overhead to administrative administration versus the one table approach. So there is a little increase. Uh, but with partitioning, what I found, especially with stock symbols, and again, probably it, it differs per industry, but with stock symbols, it was it was adding a significant amount. So it was not it was adding way above 7.3%. So the benefit to the analysis with individual tables, super fast, the fastest approach versus partitioning or one table. And then the 7.3% administrative overhead was definitely offset 
by the gains in the uh, the speed. So that's been my observations, but again, approach things, test things in your environment, because remember, I'm talking specifically mainly about financial and stock data. So it is true, you might have an example which partitioning would actually be beneficial, um, but I have not found that to be the case with stocks.